In today's tutorial, we're doing a sweet spring-themed monthly front page for our April bullet journal. Hi guys, welcome back. My name's Shada Campbell. Uh, this week we celebrated our first day of spring in the Northern Hemisphere and now as of filming we're having the most beastly snowstorm. But I, regardless of that, I thought it would be fun to do a very spring inspired April front page for our planner, for our bullet journal. So that's what we're going to do today. And I've been noticing something lately about the channel and that's that there is not a lot of animals represented here. We don't often do animal tutorials and that's kind of sad because I know people love to draw cute little animals. Um, we did do some winter watercolor birds back in December, but that's about it. Um, and there's a reason that we don't do a lot of animals on this channel, and that is simply that I really struggle with drawing animals. They're just not my forte, and so naturally I tend to steer clear of them. But I really wanted to draw a cute little bunny uh, for today's video, and so I worked through it. And I wanted to tell you guys that. It took me a whole afternoon of rough sketching, and I um, practiced this bunny, <laughs> and I used tracing paper to, you know, keep what I liked about my initial sketch, get rid of or change what I didn't like. So that's how I got to the finished product that I'm going to share with you guys today. And I just want to take a second to thank everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Your support means so much to me. It helps this channel continue forward. And since this is the April bullet journaling tutorial, uh, after you watch today's video, you'll be able to head over to my Patreon site and get your monthly planner printable. Um, I've just designed it, also a nice spring theme. And I also did something different this month. I'm releasing all of the front page illustrations. So the bunny that we're going to work through today, um, say the February page with the window and the teacup that's all available now for you to print out so something different okay well I'm gonna go get my bullet journal out you guys are gonna click that subscribe button and I will see you in a moment and make sure to watch until the end of today's video because I have some big news to share in my past bullet journaling videos we've done a lot of monthly and weekly layouts and so today we're kind of going to focus on the front page and work this really cute spring illustration. So you can see here in the other months we would do the um, month title on the left with the calendar on the right and then I have a full month at a glance layout as well as a weekly layout. And I've shown how to do these in other videos. You can also print them if you're a member of my Patreon. February same thing, illustration on the right, calendar on the left and January similar but I noticed I wasn't really using the large calendar so much. I just need a, to see the dates at a glance. Um, so today I'm going to try something different. I've been experimenting a lot. I'm new to bullet journaling. So actually I was um, doing some fun weekly layouts. If you follow me on Instagram at Shada Campbell, I was posting this stuff where I was doing these kind of more crowded, fun collage type layouts. And um, I also did a video um, about this kind of layout as well. Um, and I'll link that in the description but so I've been trying things out changing things up and so we're gonna do something a little different today so I'm starting here by um, I want to put April on the right hand side crazy I know so I'm just marking my center line and I'm gonna write April there and then I'm just carefully um, putting two lines that are the same size to kind of border it in border the title in and then I'm doing some simple little botanical illustrations so leaves and vines, some of my little spiral roses, some flowers, some little twigs. And you can practice with that in pencil or if you're confident you can just go straight ahead in pen and start doing some cute little botanical illustrations. And they're sort of emerging from the line. So the illustrations, they very much cut off at the line, it's almost as if they're growing out of it. And the ones on top are growing up and the ones on the bottom are growing down. And if you want to see more videos about floral and um, leaf illustration I have a couple and I'll link those in the description below so that's what the title looks like when it's all done just a simple cursive and these two lines and then a simple floral illustration but it's very punchy you get a lot of bang for your buck with that sort of design with the two lines it looks so pretty and then I'm just doing a very very small calendar you can see me drawing the day or writing out the days of the week and then just keeping to my dot grid making a nice grid of a calendar and that's what my sort of title page looks like when it's done 
I've got my little calendar, my April title, and then I've got the whole left-hand side available for a fun illustration. But even though we're focusing on the front page right now, you guys can still get the monthly layout that I always do, and that's available over on Patreon. Okay, let's get started with our beautiful spring illustration. Guys, I love you so much. I'm gonna draw a bunny. <laughs> I know so many people love animals and drawing animals. They're not my forte, but I'm trying. And I do think my bunny turned out fine, but it was hard for me. <laughs> let me just say. So anyways, let's start with a nice rectangle in the middle here. You can make yours as large as you want. Mine, I just came in about five dots on every side. And I'm gonna put the bunny in the left-hand corner since he's facing sort of to the right. And you just start by sketching him out. You wanna get the shape of the head right more than anything. And he kind of has this little almost dog-like nose where it's just this semicircle, And then the two, his little cheeks sort of emerge from the nose. The ears are sort of right on top of his head and you're drawing him on the three-quarter angle so you're seeing one side of his face much more than the other. And that can be a little tricky especially um, if you haven't done it before but just follow along with this and you'll start to get sort of the feel for it but one side of the face is much bigger. The nice thing about this bunny is his body is very sort of it's just like a big lump, <laughs> so you can draw that. I know you can draw that. And um, the eye is kind of this slanted teardrop shape. And all I can say about the eye is just play around with it until you get it the right sort of size and shape and put a big highlight in it. Um, oh my gosh, I, draw, I drew so many Donnie Darko bunnies. I'm not kidding. I had these scary, scary bunnies and I actually had to stop filming. I couldn't get it and I just had to practice <laughs> for a little while, but this is what I cam came up with. So I was quite happy with him when I was all done. Okay, bunnies done, feeling good. Um, what we're gonna do with the rest of the illustration here is just draw this sort of wild flower patch and um, it, everything is sort of going upwards. Everything other than the bunny is on the vertical. So I'm drawing all these flowers sort of growing up and you know, sort of reaching for the sky. So it's, it's this very sort of vertical drawing except for the bunny in the foreground. I'm gonna start going over this in my Pigma Microns. I'm using the 005 and the 02, some of the smaller nibs today um, so that you guys can really see. But I'm not gonna get super into the floral illustration because we, we cover that a lot. And I know some people will say, oh, you, you always do flowers, but that's what I love to draw. And I think when you sort of find what you love, it's so great to um, dig into that and go with it and another thing is that if you are having trouble if you're struggling to draw a bunny well once you get them it's nice to enhance the drawing or the piece that you're working on with something that you're also really comfortable with so here's my bunny that I'm not so comfortable with but I'm adding all these botanical drawings and they're sort of in my wheelhouse uh, when you're doing the botanicals add lots of lines for shading and that will really make your illustration pop and you can make a flower that you're maybe not even that happy happy with really look great and come to life by adding shading and I'm just drawing lines and shadow wherever I think there might be some so inside the petals would that be a little darker yeah sure maybe the sun's not hitting in there when you're shading you get to decide where that light is coming from is it coming from the right or the left totally up to you um, so say it's coming from the right you can add more lines and shadow on the left hand side of everything in the drawing um, so just adding those little details details can really make your illustration pop and especially when you're illustrating in pen you need to add um, some detail and um, it helps it to not just look like a sort of like a contour drawing like a coloring book image and I'm just adding a bunch of different sort of um, floral and leaf shapes I'm not doing tons but I'm doing a couple different ones to add some variety so some of the I'm just drawing lines that sort of shoot straight up or you know, they, they're curved lines, but they're going straight up from the bottom of the image. And then every line has sort of different shapes of petals. So some of the petals you can see are sort of little hearts. And then other ones are these kind of floppy circles. And by doing different um, leaves, but still repeating, it makes a nice cohesive piece. So what I mean by that is say you pick three different types of plants that you, you can make them up. <laughs> So you've got variety, you've got three different ones, but then you're gonna repeat them. So you also have this nice um, pattern and repetition within the piece that makes it all sort of come together and look nice. 
And this is a fun one to draw that has a nice detail to it. You're drawing sort of these little shoots that come off the main stem and then they all just have a little heart shape on the end or you could make it a three leaf. Um, but it has a nice detailed element and it, it's quite easy to do. So I'm just going along adding lots of different flowers and leaves and trying to sort of make them a little bit interwoven so that it does look natural and um, so that it looks like, you know, a field of wildflowers. Now in the very foreground here, I'm just gonna do one plant that's sort of coming forward that's a little more three-dimensional than the rest of the very sort of flat 2D image. And so the bottom leaf is kind of a heart shape, so it's very much coming towards the viewer. And I'm just drawing a few little very nondescript shaped flowers and um, making these leaves a little more detailed. There's lots of teeth and veining on them, um, but that's just sort of a nice, another nice thing that you can put in the foreground of this image. Also a good trick is to make one side of the leaf a little darker than the other and that just helps to make your uh, illustration pop. And I'm just going to finish off the floral part of this piece by adding a couple more flowers and as I said doing lots of line shading and trying to make everything look like it's overlapping and interwoven. You don't just want a bunch of flat flowers that are sort of one, two, three in a row. Try to make them all wild. Um, and then I'm going to start going over the bunny. And again, like I said, animals are not my forte. And so I found this a bit scary. Pen is so permanent. You know, it just feel, doesn't feel scary or permanent when I'm doing flowers, but when I'm doing animals, it, it all of a sudden seems very permanent. So I'm just going around the shape of the bunny, around the contour, and I'm doing a nice sketchy line, but still a hard line so that he pops out of the background and making sure to mark off the highlight in his eyes. You don't want a big dead black eye. You wanna leave lots of highlight there, so lots of white space. And um, once I'm done the bunny, I'm also going over my border. So remember that rectangle that we drew? Of course, part of it is now obscured by flowers, but the part that isn't, you want to go over and reinforce. And you might even do a double line, um, but a single line looks nice as well. So make sure you do that and make sure you don't draw over the flowers. You wanna be really careful. And then I wanna add some stippling to my piece because I don't want the bunny to look like the flowers are sort of growing right out of his back. So this will help add some shadow and depth and it'll just look cool and detailed. So what I'm doing is I'm making the bottom of the piece really dark or the bottom of the rectangle and then I'm making the top much lighter, white. So I've got this very concentrated amount of stippling near the bottom and actually uh, across the top of the rabbit as well. And then the rest of the piece, the stippling gets much much lighter and eventually there isn't any right at the top so you'll see what I mean here in a second but this takes a minute to do um, but it doesn't take that long <laughs> so I didn't film it all but I just did the stippling and that's what it looks like when it's all done and I do have a video about how to do uh, stippling successfully so I'll link that as well but I did kind of a U shape so it's very dark behind the bunny it's very dark at the bottom and sort of up the sides a bit and then very white and clean in the middle there so it really gives uh, the piece some room to breathe and I'm super pleased with the way it turned out there was only one problem and that's that the bunny was like glowing white I needed to add shading to him and I was really nervous about that um, and so I you know I felt okay I have to do line shading because it's gonna look I want it to look like fur and I just tried my best and I think it turned out fine um, you know I was trying something totally new here but I was quite happy with the result just did these sketchy broken lines and made it best as I could look like fur. So that's what my page looks like when it's all done. I was very, very happy with it. And I hope you like it too, because this is available to be printed. You'll find this title page and some of the other month front pages on my Patreon site right now. So super easy to print and stick in your own planner. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you will give this bunny illustration a try and I hope you don't draw too many Donnie Darko-esque bunnies like I did. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and now for my big news. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you like my bunny. Okay, for my big news, I'm gonna be writing a book. I, I am writing a book, it's happening. <laughs> and I've actually known for a while now and I sort of kept the news under my hat because saying it out loud just made it so real. And it's such a 
big deal. It's definitely a dream come true and it's so exciting, but it's also terrifying. Like all good things in life, it's exciting and scary, but wonderful. And I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna say about this. And I really, really want you to comment because I'd love to know, um, what do you want this book to be? What is in your dream Shada tome? <laughs> is it all new material? Is it sort of a collection of the best of the channel material? Maybe a marriage of both? Um, yes, let me know. Any thoughts, whatever comes to mind, you just comment below because I could use all the guidance and direction I can get because really this book is for you guys. Okay, thanks again for watching. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week with a new tutorial.